Hey, Saj Hussain here and welcome to vlog number two. First of all, thank you so much for all the love uh, and uh, uh, messages that I've had from vlog one. I really appreciate that. Sort of keep that up and I'll keep doing these vlogs. So today, where am I? I'm in North Birmingham. Uh, we're at our project, which is a six bedroom uh, HMO. Uh, it's uh, to my mentees. I've done this uh, project. I want to share with you what they've done. They've done an absolutely amazing job particularly in a very competitive market. I want to share what they've done, the numbers and how they've done this. So we'll walk through in a moment. It's an amazing property. It's a three-story uh, property, nice big building, perfect layout for, for a HMO. And then what we'll do, we'll jump in the car and we'll whiz over to another project that I'm doing at the moment, which is not quite finished. That's also a six bedroom HMO. And I'll show you that one just before it's uh, finished. We're, we're probably two or three weeks away to finish that particular one. And I'll run through the numbers on that as well. So stay tuned and let's head inside and let me show you this first one, first of all. Hi and welcome to this beautiful HMO in North Birmingham. I'm delighted to be invited to share uh, what uh, Guillaume and Andy have done with this project. Uh, I want to show you some of the details in terms of this fantastic property that they've created, how they've done that, some of the numbers uh, as well. So first of all guys, thank you so much for inviting me to this beautiful project that you have here. No problem Serge. Most welcome. So we've got the, uh, the the lovely artwork on the wall here as well. Yeah. For which uh, looks lovely, yeah. some fairly arranged. So where's the TV going here? So the TV, TV? So, so the TV goes here. Oh, you've just so freestand it here. The, okay. the, the turn spray for it. Yeah. Again, because the, the USB socket that yes. goes all the way all the way to the desk there. Okay, so you can plug it through there. Yeah. So Kia. Fantastic job you've done here. So tell us about the work that you've done uh, in the property there. As you mentioned, you've got to do all out. And I'm, I'm loving the styling and the colour scheme. Uh, it just makes it stand out. And I guess we're, we're in North Birmingham right now. The market's quite competitive here. You know, I have quite a few properties uh, in this area. We've noticed over the years it's becoming harder and harder to let. But when you've got an outstanding property like this, it makes it so much more easier. So tell me a little bit about the thinking of behind what you've created here. Yeah, exactly. So it always looks, you know, the end results always is impressive, but it's all the planning that went into it before we started the works yes. themselves. So the first thing we did really on this... Okay, so now we're on our way to uh, another project. This is one of the properties that uh, uh, we're converting to a, a HMO. It's a six bedroom HMO again, um, similar uh, to what we just went to, went to see. And uh, Andy shared a really interesting story earlier on about how it took him months, about four months to get this particular deal uh, deal done and in the end he got a great deal you know it turned out to be a, a fantastic project for them this particular one that we're going to look at now was again another challenging situation with the uh, with the vendor in fact it took nearly a year it's about 11 and a half months uh, IDAS uh, my uh, business partner uh, in many uh, projects that we do um, he worked with the with the vendor tirelessly, tirelessly for months trying to get this deal done. So just to give you a little bit of background, the property was up for sale. We purchased it for 170,000, uh, this one that we're heading to now. Um, the, the, the vendor, uh, a couple were there with, um, uh, I think one adult uh, child of theirs, um, or one of their adult kids. Uh, now, what happened, because of their age, they wanted to actually sell this property and buy another property, but raising a mortgage on the next property was gonna be a problem because of their, their age. And then also there were some issues between the husband and wife, whether they wanted to go on uh, into another property together or whether they wanted to split up and go their own ways. So not only were we having to counsel them on their uh, relationship and uh, pull all the stops out, we're trying to find a suitable mortgage broker to help them set up the purchase for the next property for them. And it was their daughter that ended up purchasing the next property on, on for, for the parents. But it was all these other things that we have to get involved in when people talk about buying a property direct from a, a vendor and particularly if it's a motivated vendor when you're trying to get a deal to work for you and to work for them you really have to dig deep and understand the circumstances 
of the person selling, why they want to sell, and most importantly, what is it ultimately that they're trying to achieve? What's the outcome? What's really, really important for them in getting that transaction done? That's what we have to focus on. And when we start with that end in mind, what we're able to do is work backwards and see, right, how can we help this person get what they want? How can we deliver to them what they need as an outcome? And then, then we can fit everything else around that. Now, and if there's a deal to be done, believe me, it will fall in your lap. But whereas many people focus on what's in it for me, what am I gonna get out of that transaction? You're not thinking about the other person, and that's where deals either fall apart, they don't work. People talk about persuasion or influencing people, which I think is the wrong strategy when you're negotiating with a vendor. Because if you're influencing or persuading somebody to work with you, bear in mind how long does it take for a typical purchase to happen? Two, three months, that's plenty of time for them to change their mind, decide they don't wanna go ahead and pull out of that deal. And you don't want that call where they've changed their mind and they've decided they don't want to do this deal. That's why it's really important that you're generally interested in the vendor and doing everything you possibly can to help them. So I said on this particular project, we spent months and months and months, particularly IDAS, in terms of working with them. Uh, the deal was off, the deal's back on, the deal's off, the deal's back on. And this happens quite often. When a deal falls out of bed, we think that's it, it's dead in the water. It isn't dead in the water, it just means not right now. As I mentioned before, it will come back the deal will become a deal again uh, and it's just we have to meet the vendor when they're ready to do the transaction what I mean by that is when they're emotionally ready whatever's going on in their life when they're ready to do that deal because it may be when we've started the transaction that we think it's a good time to get it done but there's other circumstances in their life and whatever else is going on they decide they don't want to do the deal and it falls out of bed it could be they're talking to other people, it could be other things that are going on in their life. So this is why it's important that we always do our very best for the vendor in the situation uh, or what suits them and what circumstances they're facing, do whatever we can to help them and to serve them. And if it doesn't work for them, that's okay. We park it and as Andy was talking about earlier on, we make sure we follow up, we follow up. Um, and we just touch base, how are you? How are you getting on? Anything I can help you with? Um, and if there's other things that we have to do to help them, whether it's introduce them to mortgage brokers, people doing a move um, or whatever it might be, you know, we do whatever we can to help and serve them to get the result that they want, which is what will give you the result that you're looking for. So welcome to this project here. This is uh, originally a three bedroom family house uh, built probably in uh, the 1940s, 50s, around that sort of time, uh, and now converting this to a six bedroom, six ensuite HMO. Uh, right now we're in one of the communal spaces. This will be a little bit of a sitting area uh, with a TV on the wall uh, over here. Uh, we put quite a large extension on the back of this, which I'll show you in a, in a few moments. And uh, let me show you a little bit around the property first, and I'll talk through some of the numbers and some of the things that we're doing uh, in this particular property. So um, here, this is the front of the house that we've just come in through uh, there. And originally this was a hallway that went straight through. So clearly we've, we've closed it off. We had a reception room over here and a reception room over here. And then the kitchen was here. So this was the space and the layout for this house uh, originally. And as we went through here, this would go through into the kitchen area, which was kind of combined with this space over here. So we rejigged it because, you know, although it worked great as a house when it was originally built as a family house, what we want to use it for is a, is a HMO, a high spec, high quality uh, HMO that will attract professional tenants, which is the way we like to try and create these houses. And as we talked about in the last property that we just had, the market is competitive right now. This is very different from when I started doing HMOs about 10 years ago. Uh, the market has evolved hugely and we need to move and adapt with the market. So the quality and the finishes and the layout and the design that we have now is very different to what we were doing say three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago and even ten years ago. So uh, here um, 
uh, as I said, we've got a, a bedroom that we've created over here now. We've created a bedroom uh, over here. Uh, this space where we were just in a moment ago is communal space. And I'll talk about the kitchen and the room downstairs. We've got another bedroom at the back. So effectively three bedrooms on the ground floor with three upstairs. So let's go on through upstairs now and we'll talk about uh, what we've done uh, in, the, in the house. So we're literally in the last couple of weeks of getting this project finished. Uh, the decorating has been done. They, they actually were putting the flooring in just earlier today. Uh, the laminate floor, the carpet's already gone in. So the, the floor coverings are, are now in. Really, it's just tidying up little bits of loose end where the doors need adjusting and trimming, uh, little fixtures and fittings that need to go into the room. Then we can clean up and start getting the furniture in. So in a property like this, we've packed in a huge amount of learning from the last 10 years, uh, what we put into the property as each time we do a renovation, we'll improve it slightly, we take the learnings from the last one and we bring them across. Just little things like, uh, for example, uh, the lights have got automatic sensors on, so as soon as somebody walks in this area, the lights come on so you don't have them left off all the time. They have built-in emergency lighting within them so you haven't got ugly emergency lighting. The, uh, there's an example of that, so if you just pan up right now, you'll see the emergency lighting there or just move around to get that back on. So you can tell this is all real. Um, so the lights, are, again, the light switches are then not uh, left on all the time. Uh, for example, the door hinges that we've got, the hinges are self-closing. So what that means is you don't have those ugly overhead things on there. The doors can close nicely themselves. They just look like normal hinges. I'll show you some of the details in the room in just a, uh, just a few moments. But what we originally had here was a traditional three bedrooms upstairs with a bathroom. We've reconfigured this space. We've changed it a little bit. So we've still got the three bedrooms, but there's no bathroom no longer upstairs here. There's no communal bathroom because each of the six rooms has its own ensuite uh, for, for, that particular, for that particular room. What we have got here is the, uh, the plant room, the boiler room, if you come on through, and uh, you'll see, so we've got the boiler there, we've got the, the tank there, so all the, the plant and equipment uh, goes there. And then let me show you uh, one of the rooms. I mean, the rooms are all very similar, so let me just tell you uh, about this. A lot of this happens in terms of the design way before we start work, very much like we were talking about in the project earlier on, where before the builder even starts working, all the layout, the designs and everything's mapped out plainly, and that's imperative. That's a learning that we had for many years, that the more time we spend in the planning, the easier the project gets. That means there's less uh, unforeseen. Now, does that mean in a project like this, we've not had any unforeseen? Absolutely we had. We've had things that we weren't expecting that have happened within this particular uh, project. But they're more manageable because we don't really uh, expect too many problems. You plan out as many things as you possibly can. So let's talk about a little bit of the detail here. So we're on a, a lovely, comfortable, uh, cushy uh, carpet here. It's always important uh, for me that when someone walks into a room, they can feel that comfort. It shows the potential tenant that we really take time and care uh, and we don't scrimp to make sure we're providing a quality product because at the end of the day, we're asking for a premium rent. What that means is that we want to make sure that the tenant feels the quality uh, in this particular property, right down to the door handles. There'll be nice chunky door handles uh, that are on here uh, as well. So as I said, each room has got an ensuite uh, as well. So if you have a, a look on uh, here, you've got a nice uh, power shower with a, a rain uh, head on there. Um, slow closing uh, toilet seats, uh, chunky uh, shower tray, all these things help towards creating a, a quality a quality product. And then uh, outside here we have the um, um, access uh, for the water uh, if we need to ever turn it off. Again, these things are about thinking ahead uh, in case any issues and leaks, we can isolate the water in this particular room rather than having to turn the water off for the whole house or worse still, a set of six houses, which sometimes you have to do to be able to deal with leaks. And then things like these light switches, uh, where the feature wall uh, will go, uh, the sockets, the height, the spacing, all these are planned out way before we even start work on the property. And if you have a look at these particular uh, sockets over here, uh, these sockets are not just the normal sockets, they've got a USB charging point, but they've also got a USB-C uh, which is the later design, which more phones and laptops uh, now are starting to use. So it's important we're using the latest technology and not technologies now becoming old and redundant. 
because in five, six years time, we still want this to be a desirable uh, property. So uh, over here, we've got a little bit of worktop space. It's not quite fitted uh, just yet. And what will happen here, this will be used as a little bit of food storage area, but also um, in terms of a little bit of a work surface. And we've got RJ45 connection here. So we have network points throughout the whole property. There's TV points uh, in the room uh, as well, in each room. We've also got uh, codes uh, on the door. So that way we don't need to have keys for each of the uh, rooms. So again, it kind of becomes more keyless. Um, uh, in terms of access for the uh, for for the property, now we've also built a nice big four meter extension uh, on this property, which we'll go down to in a moment, and I'll talk you through that. This is done under permitted uh, development, and what we do with these particular type of extensions, rather than putting one application in, what we tend to do is we put two applications in. So we put a planning application in, and we put a permitted development application in as well. So what that means is, what we're saying is. If we get um, the, the, the planning approved the way we want, that's great. If not, we've got a plan B and we're going to go with that anyway. So we have multiple applications in at one time rather than relying on one or having to adjust and renegotiate. And so that way, whilst we finish the work on the property, this gets approved and we start working uh, on that. So let's go on through downstairs and I'll talk through some of the numbers as well on this particular property. Let's go back downstairs. So here we're in the kitchen right now. So this is the uh, kitchen for, for these six rooms. Uh, it's quite compact in terms of its sufficient uh, work surface area and storage cupboards. Uh, remember most of the rooms have got food storage area in their rooms as well because it's one of the requirements for this type of HMO that we, we're creating. Um, and what we tend to do is uh, we, f we make sure that we're creating a good quality product. So that the cupboards that we use, for example, they're good quality. They're not the cheapest ones that we will find. So because it creates durability. And I, I see sometimes people talk about if it's a rental property, they'll put the cheapest kitchen they can find in there. No, if you put a good quality, durable kitchen in there, not only is it a nice finish, but it will last for a much longer period of time because it's a quality product. And remember, if you've got six people using this in and out all the time, it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. So it's important that it's hard wearing. Um, and um, here was on the ground floor, pretty much we've got laminate throughout and upstairs we've got carpet on the flooring. And the reason we do that is to just try and absorb some of the noise. If we had a laminate floor upstairs and somebody's walking around in heels, for example, as she's walking around upstairs in heels, it would make a lot of noise. So what we try and do is have carpets upstairs so it just deadens that sound, absorbs any sound. And downstairs, we tend to have a, a laminate floor, which is what we've got throughout the kitchen space here. So we'll have the, 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 the cooker here, the oven. Um, here we've got the extractor, nice uh, gloss finish um, over there. Uh, again, nice good quality tiles uh, that we've got. We'll have the dishwasher in here as well. And then this is the extension bit that we uh, showed you a few moments ago from upstairs. Um, so we've got the kitchen part here and we've got another room next to it over there. So uh, let me show you the room that we've got um, over here. Uh, in here, we've just got the, uh, the washer dryer will go uh, in this particular area, but come on through where we've got another room. So uh, this is the, the other part of the extension that we've built on the back of this house. So this is effectively another bedroom that we've created. So the extension houses this third bedroom on the ground floor and also the uh, bathroom, uh, sorry, the kitchen uh, in there. And we've got an ensuite here as well and a little bit of uh, storage space. So effectively this is like a, um, a built-in walk-in wardrobe. Maybe not quite a walk-in wardrobe, but this is essentially a fitted cupboard uh, for clothes. And the reason we, we design them in this particular way, and you noticed them in the last house as well, is again, it's less wear and tear, they're much bigger. It means less things that move around within the room, the less problems that we'll have in terms of breakages uh, and issues over time. And the wallpaper design is slightly different in some of the uh, rooms, again, because we wanna try and make them slightly different rather than all being exactly the same. So let's go on outside uh, from the back and I'll show you uh, the extension that we've uh, built, built there. So this is the extension you can see. So this is the kitchen window here and we've got the bedroom window there, the one we were just in uh, a moment ago. So all this is uh, new, uh, again, with a rubber roof. And the reason we use the rubber roofs is they're quite durable. They last a long time. 
uh, again this is about planning for the for the long term uh, around here we're just finishing off the fence there's as i said there's probably a couple of weeks or so work um, before we're pretty much done here furniture needs to arrive all the appliances needs to come in before we can take professional photographs and photography i'll try and see if i can pop back here to this particular property to give you a, a, a visual of it completely finished just like the last one we went to which was a, a fully finished uh, project before the tenants start to move in um, so there was a, a let's say a little bit of a overgrown greenery here which we've had to uh, attend to um, so just running through the numbers on this particular property so I said we purchased for 170,000 and our spend is about 100,000 on this one I say about because it's not quite finished it might be a tad over but it's about 100,000 pounds that includes all the renovation work the extension uh, that we built uh, stamp duty uh, on the on the property as well so our complete costs come in at about 270 Seventy thousand pounds. So the rental or the the income on this property will be in the region of uh, twenty seven hundred pounds, going up to about three thousand pounds a month. So that will be the the gross income that we'll get on the the rooms on this particular house. Um, so uh, in terms of an overall end of value on the property, that we will probably end up where we will end up on the property uh, um, once we've uh, remortgaged. So the end value, the surveyable value on its income that it's generating, um, we'll get a valuation on that and we'll borrow about 75% of that. And what that should leave us is getting most of our money, probably not all of it, but most of our initial investment that's gone into this property back out of it. So it will leave very little money left in this particular property. And in terms of the, uh, the mortgage, um, we'll have probably around £170,000 that we'll borrow, um, uh, sorry, £270,000 that we'll borrow on the uh, property, which is most of the money that we've put into it. Uh, and our mortgage payments will probably be um, around uh, 11 or £1,200 pounds, uh, per month. And obviously, um, uh, depending on the, the rate, interest rates are quite low, we might even get a sub-thousand-pound uh, monthly payment on a mortgage, which will be interest only. Uh, and then what we'll uh, end up with is a, a nice, healthy cash flow, thousand pound plus uh, most probably after the the running costs the expenses gas uh, electricity water council tax uh, tv license cleaners gardeners internet access once we've taken all the costs and some management uh, as well we'll be should be netting over a thousand pound a month on this particular property so not a bad deal uh, where you get all the money pretty much out of it and you're still generating around a thousand pounds a month net profit so let me know if you've got any questions if you're finding this useful please let me know in the comment section make sure you smash that like button uh, make sure you subscribe as well so, so you're aware of when these videos are uh, are released so you can follow uh, these and if i've got any questions make sure you put them in the comment section below and i'll do my very best to answer those and remember on monday evenings i'm also doing the live q a session uh, as well uh, and where I can answer your questions there. So we're gonna we're gonna head off back to the office a moment, and I want to share with you something new that has only just been released last week, which is an opportunity that is really important that you're aware of. So let's just jump back in the car, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So we're back in the office uh, now it's what nearly five o'clock uh, we've been out to a couple of properties and what i wanted to do was share a key learning uh, from the projects that we've been to see and also share with you something really interesting that's happened last week that will impact all of us going forward but just before i do that if you've enjoyed the video please make sure that you hit the subscribe button on YouTube so that you're notified uh, when videos are released. In fact, you hit the notification bell so that you're notified when new videos are released. And if you enjoyed it, please also hit the like button. All these things just help out. And if you've got any questions, please put them in the comment section just below and I'll make sure that I get those answered for you. And remember, as I mentioned before, on Mondays at 8.30, I'm doing live Q and A's on my social media platform so you can find me there too uh, and answer any of your questions there. So what was a key learning from uh, the two properties we went to see earlier? Well, the main thing I wanted to, to take from that to share with you as a separate thing was 
both of those properties were working with motivated sellers and where we created opportunities where initially on the surface it felt like there was no opportunity here there was no deal to be done but they transpired they did turn into deals because we were persistent with them but more importantly was understanding their needs and that's how we create those particular opportunities but opportunities come by every day the challenge is we don't always see them and spot them as opportunities because they're not always dressed as opportunities and we have to decipher and work through what appears to where the opportunity is so an opportunity that's just happened right now which is really hot off the press is that some permitted development rights have just changed so uh, if you look at uh, flats which have been purpose built there's some permitted development rights now which means you can build above those and put some additional stories on the existing block of flats that's an amazing opportunity now there's quite a few caveats and i'll do a separate video in some more detail uh, in uh, in future uh, in future videos but just i wanted to share at this stage with you the opportunity so you can start thinking about where you can spot these potential uh, properties so if we roll the clock back a few years when the uh, office to uh, residential opportunity came about for a couple of years very few people spotted it that you could take a commercial building commercial office building and turn it into residential without full planning under a prior approval in a very similar way this opportunity now exists but it's not going to be around forever what happened with office to residential after a couple of years a year and a half everybody started jumping on the bandwagon the prices went through the roof for office space which meant it was actually become less and less viable to acquire these office buildings to convert to residential space now again these opportunities as they come about it's important that you jump on them uh, make sure that you're benefiting from them if you like that and if you have already spotted or got properties in mind that can benefit from that make sure you put in the comment section below uh, let me know what your thoughts are and i want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this vlog and I look forward to seeing you next week on Vlog 3.